What's going on my broskies? My name is Toitsky back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. We had some uh, interesting news revealed in this data download here. Uh, kind of awesome that we also had the data download on Global First by the way. But this is going to be for April Fools. This is all coming on the 1st of April so keep on the lookout. April 1st for this entire day, for 24 hours, you're going to have the opportunity to get a free multi-pull on this Uso Fest, Super Uso Fest. Um, don't mind the name, by the way. It is uh, it is not a Super Sugo Fest. Uh, this this is just going to be an event where you can do a free multi here, which is cool. And you get Usopp characters. That's basically all it is. Uh, it's nothing really that special. It does mention here, additionally, the last wanted poster is something. We don't know what that is. Um, I don't know, but either way, this is a good opportunity for those who don't have Legend Usopp yet, because Legend Usopp is going to be pullable, and I believe this Sugo Fest is only going to have Usopp characters. So if you get a red, you get Legend Usopp. If you don't have him, that's awesome. I don't know if Usopp and Nami are going to be available. If I, if I had to take a stab at it, I would say they're probably not, so keep that in mind. But either way, this Sugo Fest is going to be here. Pretty interesting decision to have that. Just wanted to put that out at the start of the video in case you guys are wondering about that. But we have some more information here that's even more exciting. And that's the fact that we have our brand new Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest revealed. Now, everyone in the community had the unanimous decision that, you know, Boa Hancock was going to be the brand new PvP character coming in April. However, we were very, very wrong. Now, look, there could still be, like, maybe another additional Sugo Fest come along. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. We have this Sugo Fest right here, um, which is kind of weird because this one still is going to be here as well. And you see, this one ends in one day. So they have like two Pirate Rumble banners side to side. Uh, I don't know if that means there is going to be another banner coming out. But at this point in time, it looks like this is going to be our one for April, which is going to be featuring three brand new characters. We have Dory and Broggy as PvP rare recruits, as well as a brand new PvP legend, Eurog. Yes, Eurog is the brand new PvP legend, which is just absurd to me. You know, they planned everything to make it seem like Boa Hancock was going to be the brand new PvP legend. And then Eurog is the character that they chose, which is a very odd decision because I feel like Boa Hancock would have been way more hype and it probably would have had more people invested to spend their rainbow gems. However, that is not the case. Um, we're going to go through this character and all the other characters in this video today. A new arena has been data downloaded as well, which we'll be covering in this video as well. So let's have a look at the steps. First of which, if we had a discount multi, which is pretty awesome. Uh, a Rumble special character level 3. Remember that this can still be any character. It's just whatever character you pull comes with level 3 special and ability. So it's not a very good step. The third one is a legend that has level 5 Rumble special and ability. The fourth is a Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest only character, which can be a PvP legend or a PvP rare recruit. And remember that the championship series of Super Pirate Rumble is going to be, you know, launching very soon. So getting hands on some of these PvP rare recruits may be pretty useful. Uh, and of course, when Super Pirate Rumble for the championship goes live, um, we'll obviously be covering that in, in a couple of videos. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, the fifth one is a recommended unit. Now, as for the recommended units here, what have we got? We've got Oars, we've got um, Ohm, and then you've got Dorian Broggy as the four PvP rare recruits. All of them are Int, by the way. And then you've got your Rogue and Kuma. So if you get a red on the fifth multi, it's guaranteed to be your Rogue or Kuma. Then, obviously, it's going to be cycling through the, the typical stuff here. And if you go all the way to the 25th, you get the guaranteed Rogue Legend, which I definitely do not advise doing. Um, let's go ahead and break down these brand new characters, because I must admit, is Rogue is... It, he's underwhelming. At least in my opinion, I find him to be pretty underwhelming. Let's go through each of these uh, PvP rare recruits first. So we have we have Dory, or Broggy, so this one's going to be Broggy. Int Powerhouse Slasher. Um, I believe all of this uh, regular abilities, they don't really matter. We're here to look at the Rumble abilities. So if you use him on a team, his passive is going to give your int teammates level 6 health and level 6 speed. Pretty good. And every time he does damage up to 4 times, your int teammates get level 2 attack. So he can stack up to level 8 attack to your int allies. Great passive thus far. And then he says if Dory is on the crew at the same time, striker class enemies get defense down level 5. That's pretty good, um, especially with the way that this int team is kind of built. The int team is built to take on other Psy teams. And one of the biggest characters in the Psy teams that can be very, very detrimental to these int teams 
is going to be Yamato, who is a striker character. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head if PvP Enel is also a striker. If he is, that also hurts him as well. So, you know, it's interesting that they're trying to build this in such a way. It would have been interesting if it was side defense down level 5, would have been absolutely busted. But specifically hitting certain side characters is interesting. So there's that. His passive's pretty good. It does obviously rely a little bit in having... Uh, you know, Dory on the team as well. But even if you take that part out, the first part of the passive is still really good, having level 6 HP and speed, and every time he does damage, you get level 2 attack. It's pretty good. And then he's special on a 32 CT, and that's one of the things I've noticed with the whole new batch here, is that they have very high CT, which I'm not a big fan of, because that really, really hurts the team. But his special targets large range horizontal for 3.5 times his attack, which is a lot of damage. And then he does... Uh, an additional 1.5 times his attack if there is 60 seconds or less remaining. Pretty good, actually, and depending on the attack order, you actually might launch the special after 60 seconds, or when, when the 60 seconds are uh, remaining, you know? So, this is going to do a lot of damage. And then he also says, when Dory is on the crew, Psy enemies get level 10, attack down, and defense down. So, the combination of Dory and Brogy, we haven't even talked about Dory yet, but you can imagine that this is going to be a pretty pretty crazy uh, combination against side teams but I'll, I'll give my opinions on that in just a moment but that's uh that's pretty good now we move on to this guy we got dory now of course we didn't go through his uh, resistances or anything like that it's not super important but this guy is also an int powerhouse slasher and his passive will give your int teammates crit percent up level six and guard percent up level six and when Broggy's on the crew striker attack down level six so you can see the combination if you got Dorian Broggy, you got really good int buffs, and you're severely debuffing striker characters. Again, interesting choice. If this was Psy, but Psy debuffing, like this would be a pretty crazy combination. But the fact that it only really hits striker characters, it's not as bad, but it's still a pretty interesting combination of characters right here. But if you don't have Broggy, this passive by itself is pretty bad, in my opinion. I, I'm not a big fan of this ability, um, but if you've got Broggy, obviously, you know, you can you can get stuff done with, with both of those characters in the same team. Now, we'll look at the special ability. Now, this one's a 26 CT, which is much more respectable. Targets int teammates for attack up, speed up, and recovery up level 7. That's pretty good because there's a couple of good int recovery base units, so having that is very, very nice. And that's for 15 seconds. And then if Broggy's on the crew, he targets enemies in a large horizontal range for two times his attack is damage, and then targets two enemies with 100% CT for guaranteed special bind for 10 seconds. So, again, like, it's an okay special by itself, but with Broggy on the crew, this special becomes much better. And that's the thing, is I feel like Broggy by himself can definitely work, but if you've got just Dory, this by himself is not very good. So, I, I definitely prefer Broggy. I think Broggy is definitely the better of the two. Um, but if you've got Dory and Broggy together, then that really amplifies Dory up. And it was kind of the same with Cat Dog, where Cat in PvP definitely seemed better. And then, you know, Dogstorm isn't that great. But when you have both of them, Dogstorm becomes amazing, right? It's the same sort of thing. I don't really know how I feel about them, you know, relying on other characters on your crew. Especially in a situation like this, where Dory and Broggy don't even have that many other characters in the game. So, it's not like you can have a replacement unit for this, unless if you have, like, the story mode character character which doesn't have any pvp abilities uh, i'm not a big fan of that specifically i feel like if you're going to do something like this it would be better if you know you had actual other characters that you could replace in that situation um so i feel like this is a really poor decision and really poor design especially because dory by himself is just not that good but let's talk about the uh sugo fest exclusive or should i say pvp sugo fest exclusive which is the mad monkey rogue dude can you believe that your rogue is getting a legend in one piece treasure cruise now let's go through his abilities first because he's a legend he actually has pretty decent stuff going on here so Int, powerhouse, striker character, captain ability. There's a lot of text here, but it's really not that bad. First of which, he's a powerhouse captain. 4.25 times attack to powerhouse. Boost their attack by five times the turn that you use his special ability. And then he also boosts all other characters by four times. So, you know, he still does boost everyone, but it's a pretty low multiplier, unless if you use his special ability, but we'll get to that. He then boosts the crew's health by 1.75. You have so much health. With double your rogue, the amount of health that you have is absolutely absurd. And he also makes your crew immune to blow away, which I kind of like. That's a nice little effect to have. 
And then it also says, launches Amplified Strike, which is his special ability, launches his special at the start of the crew's turn after receiving a total of 30,000 damage or more from the enemy. Now, this is not 30,000 or more in one hit. I believe this will work similar to Super Type Kaido, where it kind of stacks up. So you can take 30,000 over like five turns, for example, but as soon as you hit that threshold, it automatically launches the special. Now, I do believe health cuts will also count towards this. So if the enemy cuts your health by like, you know, 20% with, you know, the 1.75 times health, especially if you're on double your rogue, there's a good chance that that's going to proc his, uh, his special ability, right? Um, and then the, the lo lots of text here is just regarding, you know, specials launched due to captain ability will not reduce the character special charge time. It's just, you know, just the, the legal jargon, I, I suppose, on how it actually works. Um, but then it also says, reduces the special charge time by three turns at the start of the crew's next turn after receiving damage. I really like that. So every time you take damage, the start of the next turn in his captain ability, he reduces his own cooldown by three turns, which enables you to launch his special pretty quickly. Um, he's only got a 13 turn cooldown. It's not multi-staged. So, you know, after taking a couple hits, he's going to be fully charged, ready to go, which is pretty wicked. I actually do like that a lot. And of course, if you, you can use his special, and then if you take a huge hit, and then you'll automatically get it again in the following turn. So let's see what his special actually does. So first of all, it reduces paralysis by five turns, which is okay. He does 200 times his attack and ink damage to a single enemy, not AoE, which is a bit of a missed opportunity there, but single target, 200 times his attack, it ignores everything, all defensive effects, which is great, and then reduces powerhouse character's special charge time by one turn, and if the captain is a powerhouse character, gives you a 3.75 times chain lock for one turn. Now, one thing I must say is I'm really happy that it's not a color affinity booster, because previous to this, we had characters like Legend Kuma, Legend Anel, we had um, Borsalino, for example, all of these pvp legends they all had color affinity specials so i was a little bit worried heading into this but he has an interesting special now one thing about it that i kind of don't like is i have read his crewmate abilities now none of his crewmate abilities actually provide the ability to resist special reverse so using him as a crewmate you can't use his special to get around special reverse which i think is a huge missed opportunity there but still, he gives, you know, the paralysis removal, a bit of damage, which you can attach supports to him for that. He also does the cooldown. So if you're using him as a captain, you take damage, you can reduce your character's cooldowns. And then if you do have a powerhouse character as a captain, which he is a powerhouse unit, you get a 3.75 times chain lock, which is one of the best chain locks in the entire game. So he's okay. He's not a broken unit by any means, but he's like just okay. And then as for his crewmate abilities, he boosts his base attack by 400 when your health is 30% or below. Like, that's actually pretty freaking crazy. And then his crewmate ability reduces his own special bind, or reduces the crew's special bind by one, which that is actually a really good crewmate ability. And I mean, this is also pretty good as well, because 400 base attack is insane. But it's not like, it's not like god tier, especially because I feel like special reverse should have been a pretty key component with this unit. Now, as for the other effects, he does have the enrage effect by 300. He has hunger, of course he has hunger, makes it very, very difficult to max out. And he does have the ship bind ability, which is interesting. And then for his support, attaches to any int powerhouse character, which you've got a very vast array of units you can attach to. Once per quest, if you use a damage dealing or a health cut special, changes the supported character slot into int, and you get a 2.5 times chain lock for one turn. Again, pretty usable support, definitely going to see play in one way or another, so I really do like that a lot. So that's the breakdown of the unit itself. He's fine, he's not tier zero, he's not tier one in my opinion, but I think he's a, he's a pretty okay unit, but it is a shame that it is a PvP unit because he doesn't have super class, super type, or anything like that so it is a bit of a drawback to these units designs let's have a look at his rumble stuff because of course he, he's debuting on a pvp sugo fest so he should be good in pvp right well let's go ahead and have a look so his passive at level five gives your int teammates level five health level five defense for the first 30 seconds he gives himself level three ct increase and your psi enemies are given ct decrease level three now, this is an okay passive. He doesn't provide any attack boost, which is a little bit of a downside there. But let's have a look at the rest of his kit. 33 CT is pretty high. It targets int teammates for level 5 defense, 
gives himself level 6 attack and level 6 defense. So he already gives himself level 11 defense. And he also gives himself crit percent up level 6. So he just buffs himself significantly for 20 seconds. And then targets 3 sight enemies for 4 times his attack. Uh, that is a lot of damage, by the way. If you are able to partner this up with effective um, other subs or other crewmates there for, for PvP... This is going to be incredible. The amount, of, the amount of damage that this guy does is just pretty absurd. He, I mean, he guarantees to hit three side characters, which is already very good. Um, and four times his attack, that's just so much damage. It doesn't even need to bypass defense. I mean, that's going to be... That's going to in, that, that has a good chance of insta-killing those, those three characters that he targets, right? So it's a very, very good effect. But of course, it's only good against Psy. So you can't really build a really good int team with this unit that doesn't have sight enemies against it so you really have to figure out the way you're going to be building this team because you know you can build a pretty good team with mad monkey rogue dory and broggy and then some other characters i mean og yamato can still be used uh, moria can still be used there's a lot of good units out there but there is a big problem here and the problem is is that all three of these new characters while they are a really good group of int characters that work well against side teams the problem here is, is that they're all powerhouse, and there is a one key character that absolutely destroys all of these units. And that character is this one right here, Trafalgar Law, who is a side character, Free Spirit Slasher, so he doesn't actually get debuffed specifically from Dorian Broggy because they debuff Strikers. But this guy's passive effect is absolutely absurd, giving side teammates level 6 CT increase, so even if you rogues on the enemy side of the field, you still get CT increase off of it. And for the first 40 seconds, Driven and Powerhouse enemies get CT down level 6, Guard rate down level 6, and Speed down level 6. So this guy by himself already counters pretty heavily the new batch of characters that have coming out. And I just feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. What they really should have done is they should have given you Rogue a very similar passive to this, but maybe against Free Spirit and Strikers or something, or Free Spirit and Driven or something. That would have been a way, way better, you know, situation for this Euro batch because I feel like yeah, while this while this int team is going to be really good, I still don't think it's going to stand up to a free spirit side team with even Yamato who's a striker and will get debuffed. But characters like that with V2 Odin and like Trafalgar Law, uh, this is still going to be way too good in my opinion. Um, I think they've done an almost a good job with with this Euro and Dorian Broggy, but I feel like they just missed the mark. So that's the Euro batch. It seems interesting, but I'm not the greatest fan of these characters. Still would have preferred a Boa Hancock legend. Now, before we end this video, we do have something else to talk about, which is the brand new arena. It is. It feels like it's been so long since a new arena came out, and it is also a 12-star difficulty, which is the same difficulty that they had for Queen. Now, the thing is, though, is that uh, the Queen Arena was was pretty easy, and because of the fact that we we already know the legends of like Brooke and Frankie that just came out, if this arena is built to be using those characters, I think this is going to be a very difficult arena. Now that's just my preemptive look into it. I don't know this, of course, but I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty difficult arena. So uh, get prepared for it. But we can actually have a brief look at what this uh, what this Basil Hawkins does. So Hawkins is a Psy Cerebral Striker with a Captain ability that isn't the best. 3.25 to Cerebral on Striker and 15% damage reduction. But then a special ability that is actually very good. It reduces your crew's slot bind duration by two turns, which is very unique in and of itself. But then increases all enemies' increased damage taken by 1.5 times for three turns, and then deals 250 times his attack and side damage to all enemies at the end of the turn, based on the number of uh, enemies that are on the field when you launch the special. So what that means is, is that if there's three enemies, when you launch his special, the end of turn damage goes for three turns. Or if there's six enemies, the end of turn damage goes for six turns. This is going to be pretty cool. Now, we don't know what his limit break abilities are going to be. If this character has, you know, the um, reduced cooldown at the start of the quest, this guy's going to be an absolute beast moving forward. I, I'm not expecting him to have that, but if he does, I'd be super excited. But I think his special is pretty good, especially the increased damage taken, because in situations where the enemy has like a delay, a defense down, and a poison immunity, you can still use a special like this just to get 50% bonus damage off of it. And considering he's free to play as well, this is pretty nice. I think I think this Hawkins is actually a pretty solid free to play unit. So I'm very much looking forward to this. And this is also debuting 
on the same day, April 1st at 1900 PST time. So we'll probably get the full official announcement of it tomorrow at news time. So with all that being said, that is going to conclude yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.